I actually found um, the multicultural fam um, the multicultural center for academic excellence my freshman year uh, when I joined the multicultural family literacy program and then I started uh, getting more involved and started utilizing their resources. Before I came here now I want to get like involved on campus and I did a little research on a multicultural kickoff and I thought it would be something that would be a little fun to actually get involved before school actually starts. After I transferred to the U, MK has, uh, MK wasn't that big, I didn't, I didn't really know right off the bat, but then I was introduced to MK by a friend. I was part of a summer bridge program before starting my first year at college, it was Bridge to Academic Excellence program. And through that program, I was able to learn more about some of the resources that are offered to students of color, such as MK. I first found out about MK because my scholarship, MEP, is housed within MK, and I was also a member of the American Indian Culture House my first year, so I got introduced to MK pretty early on. Before school starts in the, in the fall, they do the multicultural kickoff. It's, it's like welcome week, but it's targeted more to students of color. So it was, a, it was my first time, so I was a first coming student, and that's how MK was able to recruit me or recruit other students, and that's how I was able to find out more about what MK is. MK is a really friendly place. You know, they're really welcoming. Um, all those staffs are really welcoming. They always greet you with a warm hi, hello, how are you? Um, they always check to see how you're doing, um, make sure that you're also healthy. They've provided resources, uh, scholarships, um, community service opportunities, also tutoring services. They offer workshops like how to make a resume, what to do during an interview for a job, as well as even prof providing me an income here as a work-study student. My first experience with MK was actually seeing a tutor for one of my chemistry classes that I ended up dropping, but the tutor really helped and just having that able, like that ability to go see a tutor and ask for help was amazing. Um, calculus was what I suffered in and they had tutors here that was really brilliant and talented and I don't think I would have survived that class if I didn't have any tutors to help me out. A large service that they do provide that students like is just the computer lab. It's open and it's free to print. Just being around a lot of different people and similar people like you, you just feel really welcome here. You feel really comfortable and, and you feel like this is also another part of home. Just to see all the diversity was amazing because you don't witness that in all your classes. I mean, they were, my freshman year, I was probably the only Native student in many of my classes. Coming to the U, I was a little scared to find out what I was going to see. I knew it was going to be a large campus, but through MK, I was able to see a lot of the resources that they have to offer, as well as the diversity that is on campus, and I think that's one of the things that made me decide to stay at the U of M. They have all these programs that they run, which they invite anyone not a particular race, a particular gender, a particular ethnicity, or a particular color. They invite anyone. A lot of staff here ask how we're doing as a cultural center, and I think that there's a close relationship there, especially through COIN and Jillian and Priscilla. They all are invested in us as students, and therefore they're invested in the AASCC. I'm also a part of the Hmong Women's Group. Through, the multi through MK, and they have helped me a lot, um, especially providing um, like uh, leadership opportunities. I was able to be part of Casa Soul Living and Learning Community, um, the Family Literacy Program as well, where I was able to tutor students and become more familiar with what I wanted to do as a career. Being able to interact freely with students and the events that are thrown, a lot of ways to meet people, and to understand more of what the university has provided through MK. The small, close relationships really just made it, me realize that there are actually people at the university and not just students and staff because I got to know a lot of people more personally. Coming into MK, I was just an average Hmong man and just coming into MK, I was exposed to a, a lot of culture 
a lot of traditions and a lot of beliefs. Hello, you may be seated. Good evening, welcome to the celebration of achievement honoring our 2010-11 graduates. This event is sponsored by the Office for Equity and Diversity and your Multicultural Center for Academic Excellence. Good evening, I'm Carolyn Naimatsu, your Master of Ceremony for the evening. I am retired from the University of Minnesota, but I did serve as director of the Multicultural Center several years ago. And in 2005, when we created this event, we hoped that it would become a tradition, and it looks like it has. It's nice to see how this event has grown and has touched many lives and will continue to do so. Your processional music was presented by the wonderful voice of culture and drum dance of the diaspora. Shall we give them a hand? Our welcome tonight will be given by Chris Lockhart. Chris is the Associate Vice President for the Office for Equity and Diversity. A lawyer by training, she has worked on social justice issues related to diversity and inclusion for almost 25 years. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Carolyn. And thank you to all of you. On behalf of the University of Minnesota, I want to welcome all of you, the graduates, members of your families, your friends, and your supporters to this celebration of achievement. Thank you for being here to participate in what is truly a joyful celebration today. And you know, it's through these kinds of events that we get re-energized and we get inspired to continue working together towards a truly multicultural society. I'm very honored and privileged to be a part of this celebration, and I would also like to thank all of the deans and the collegiate representatives who are here to help us celebrate your success as graduates. I also want to extend a very special thank you to Dr. Josie Johnson for being here today to deliver our keynote. Just last week, I have to tell you that the university uh, gave the annual Josie Johnson Social Justice and Human Rights Awards. And I'd like you to know that these awards were created in Dr. Johnson's long-standing commitment to education and social justice. We're so fortunate to have her here today, and I know you will feel fortunate to have her speak to you as you mark this important transition in your life's journey. I'd like to take just a quick moment to thank the Celebration Planning Committee. I think you can imagine the kind of hard work and attention to detail that goes into putting together an event like this. And they really, really take time to try and have the event be something that will be meaningful for you as you, for some of you, bring closure to your journey at the university. Now, I want to say to that end, in terms of the memories that you have as graduates of the year 2011, um, I have just two thoughts I'd like to briefly share with you, if I may. The first is that those of us on this stage recognize that your achievements go way beyond the certificates and the degrees that you have earned. You've actually helped to change the culture of the university from within. You've helped clear the path for future generations of students. And you've helped us widen the circle of inclusion. You've encouraged us to think even more deeply about what it really means to commit ourselves to having diversity be a core value of the institution. And you've moved us closer to realizing our vision for what a university would look like if it fully embraced equity and diversity. For that, I have to say all of us up here thank you, because that is an achievement worthy of celebrating and recognizing tonight. Now the other thought I have is to just ask that you please continue to believe in yourself, continue to be proud of all of your identities, your lived experiences, and your unique world views. Please stay connected to these important markers of who you are, as I think we all know, they are some of the greatest assets that you carry with you. They are the ground on which you can continue to feel firmly planted, and they form that sense of self that will be there with you when you face your greatest challenges in life. 
Graduates, we know that when you go from here, you will make things happen. But you will also have responsibilities. There are going to be those from your communities and those from communities beyond you right now that are going to look to you for leadership. They're going to ask you to be mentors. They're going to ask you to be teachers. And they're going to ask this of you both in formal and informal ways. We ask you to realize that your voice when you're serving these roles is critical. Your voice joins all the diverse voices, stories, and perspectives that have created this university and the voices that will continue to create stronger and more inclusive communities. Your university experiences are now part of your story, and you take them with you as you go into the world beyond the university. And wherever you go next, we need your voices at every level of administration and every level of service. So in closing, I wish each and every one of you a joyous and fulfilling journey. I wish you success when it's possible, and I wish you strength and courage when it's not. Congratulations, graduates. The university's commitment to diversity in all its forms is inclusive of the arts. Please welcome Diego Rowan Martin, who will play Monasterio de Sal de Paca de Lucia. Diego can frequently be heard playing along with the acclaimed Spanish guitar artist Tony Hauser at Conga Latin Bistro.
Thank you, Diego. One of our traditions is to always have a, uh, an undergraduate student speaker. And this year, our speaker is Crystal Igbo Ognana. She was graduating with a bachelor's degree in theater arts and communication studies from the College of Liberal Arts. During her time here, Crystal has been active in many theater productions, including The Wiz and For Colored Girls. Crystal is, a, is currently a, ro a royalty ambassador for the Rice Street Festival Royalty Program in St. Paul. And this August, she'll be directing her first professional theater production at Neighbor House Theater. Welcome, Crystal. My fellow peers, faculty, family, and friends, Welcome to the day that I thought would never come. When I received the save the date for this event, I was at first, this day seems so far away, and the fact that it is here makes graduation even more of a reality. When I sat down to write this speech, I was at first stumbled at how I could incorporate the theme of change into my experience here at the U. By this point in my senior year, everything seemed the same, monotonous in a way. Wake up, go to class, do homework, go to work, more homework, and if I could manage it, sleep. As I began writing and reflecting on the past four years, I came to the revelation that all I have done here is change. Change my major, change my residence hall, employment, and favorite places to study on campus. Change happens constantly, and I'm coming to re the realization that the only thing I can depend on in life is that, well, it'll change. So let's think about the things that we've had to change to make, to make it to this point. As freshmen, we had to change our ideas of what it meant to be a student and prepare for what college would ask of us. We have changed class schedules each semester. Some of us have chosen to change where we live while others have struggled with what they want to do, which has led them to change majors many times. The dynamics between ourselves and our families have changed, and we have all experienced a change of lab partners, roommates, and at times, friends. I think it is safe to say that change has been a major theme of our experiences here at the U. And while we have been changing, the world has been changing with us. As we were settling into our classes in October of 2007, Nancy Pelosi had already settled into her new job as the first female speaker of the house. As we celebrated the completion of our first year of college in May of 2008, people in California and across the country were celebrating a major change, the legalization of marriage in the GLBT community. On January 20th, 2009, many classrooms changed their agenda to watch the inauguration of Barack Obama to the United States presidency. And a year later, we watched an earthquake devastate the country of Haiti, changing that country forever. This year, we are living through a vastly changing economic climate, and on a lighter note, we only have about a month left to watch Oprah, and I haven't decided how I'm going to deal with that change yet. <laughs> Here at the U, we have seen our peers come together to protest the threatened change of their social and cultural spaces, speak out for what they believe in, and take charge of their educational experiences, truly living up to Gandhi's words as they became the change they wanted to see. And throughout all of these changes, we have been here. I appreciate that I will be able to look back on the good and bad changes and remember celebrating in Dinkytown the night Barack Obama won the presidential election or being able to rally with my peers to support the relief efforts for the citizens of Haiti and Japan. I would not have wanted to experience these life-changing events anywhere else. As we have been changing over the past four years, it is important to acknowledge the pillars in our lives that have remained a constant. Regardless of what changes may occur, family will always be there. And for that constant, I say thank you to our families who celebrate our accomplishments with us, who encourage us to persevere through difficult times, and who are here to support us today. To our faculty and the MK staff, thank you for being our mentors and friends. Thank you for your time, your hard work, and for creating a community and safe space for us within this large university. So here we are, only nine days away from the first commencement ceremony, and I find myself anxious and excited for the changes that are about to occur. 
no more early morning classes or late nights doing homework. And while there is something slightly unsettling about that, it is most definitely a welcome change. These new changes will come with countless opportunities for each of us to grow and accomplish whatever goals we have for ourselves. I hope that with these changes, you will seize every opportunity that shows itself to you, for you do not know where change will take you. So in whatever you do, whether you are preparing for graduate school in the fall, entering the workforce, or feel like today needs to end before you can even begin to think about tomorrow, as Henry David Thoreau would say, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Good luck, and I hope for all of us futures that are full of opportunity and change. Thank you. Thank you for your excellent talk, Crystal. Um, our next entertainment will be provided by the Cambodian Stu Student Association here at the University of Minnesota. They will perform the dance Roban Pak Paul, which originated with the Nong people in the mountains of Cambodia. Please welcome our next entertainers.
Thank you, Cambodian Association. Tonight, our keynote speaker is Dr. Josie Johnson. I had the privilege of working with Dr. Johnson, and there's much I could touch, touch on introducing her, who is both revered and respected within the university community, but also the larger community. Dr. Johnson did, has been through some of the most turbulent times in our nation's history. She is noted for her civil rights work and began her civil rights work during her teenage years when she and her father canvassed her hometown of Houston to gather signatures on an anti-poll tax petition. She has visited many of the sites and, and, and participated in many of the marches that we have heard about. During her tenure here at the, in, in Minnesota, she's been a member of the Minneapolis Urban League where she served as acting director. Recognizing the power of politics, jo Dr. Johnson has been active politically. She worked with elected officials many times over the years. In 1968, she became a legislative liaison and community liaison as a mayoral aide in Minneapolis during a time of trouble for African Americans. She then served as the executive assistant to the Lieutenant Governor of Colorado and the deputy cam campaign manager for the Jimmy Carter presidential campaign in Tennessee. In addition to her civil rights and political activities, jo Dr. Johnson has had an ongoing relationship with the University of Minnesota. Between 1971 and 73, she served on the university's Board of Regents. The University of Minnesota offered her a senior fellowship in 1987, and later she became responsible for minority affairs and diversity as the Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs. As Chris Lockhart stated in her welcome, in recognition of her efforts, the University of Minnesota established the annual Josie Robinson Johnson Human Rights and Social Justice Award, a very prestigious award here at the university. Dr. Johnson received her undergraduate degree in sociology at Fisk University in Tennessee and her doctorate at the University of Minnesota Amherst. At this time, let us welcome Dr. Josie Johnson. Good evening. I need you to forgive this voice because I woke up with a frog in my throat and it hasn't gone away. So I hope you can hear me and understand what I am trying to say to you tonight. I promise you I won't be long. I know the important thing here is for you to acknowledge each other and to move from this place to some other. But I want you to know that I am very honored. I feel honored and pleased to be here. And I thank you for allowing me to come and to be a part of your celebration tonight. I think it is critical that we recognize from whence we've come. When I look at all of you, and I remember the first time we wanted to acknowledge students who were students of color here at the university and to acknowledge their graduation, we might have had half of this side of the room. And it was at a church in North Minneapolis. And at that time, we were so pleased to see that many students come out for a special celebration. I want you to know that tonight, what all of you are doing is honoring your ancestors. And you can see that through the performance that we've had the privilege of observing so far. Your ancestors were committed to a sense of liberation and emancipation. And our ancestors felt that in order to achieve that, education was necessary. For those of you of 
African-American ancestry, you will know that your ancestors fought and died for education. That is not only true of African-American students and our ancestors of African-American descent, but it is true of all people who want to preserve the quality and the culture of life that we must preserve in order to continue as a people. We have to, in my judgment, fulfill the tradition of struggle to be an educated people. An educated person cannot be defeated. An educated person is in control of his or her life and can protect their family and their communities. An educated person helps to free others and understand what it means to be liberated and emancipated. As you leave this place, the University of Minnesota, Ted Mann Center, and other places that have special meaning to you, I would ask that you allow me as your one of your elders to just share a few thoughts with you. I've been involved in the field of education for 50 plus years and to know that what I am observing in front of me tonight is the most rewarding and satisfying experience this old lady could have. As you leave this place, however, I'm asking as one of your elders just to think about a few things. I want you to continue to educate yourself. I want you to study, understand, appreciate, conserve, and preserve your history. I want you to keep a sense of peoplehood and humanity in every action you take, in everything you do. I want you to develop a sense of critical thinking skills. We need to have you be critically thinking human beings. We are at a moment in this experience politically where it is almost difficult to discern what is truth and what is fiction. We are at a point as never before, and I can say that from a long, long time of engagement in the political and social life of our society. We are in a time when negative thinking, hate-filled, mean and racist people accounting on you and your inability to think critically, to deny the full liberation and emancipation of all people. I'm asking you to reach out and help our children. Help them be the best they can be. You have been privileged with the skill and the time, the discipline and the rewards to be the best you can be. It is your turn to help our children close the gap that you read so much about. You must reach out 
in order to fulfill the requirements that our ancestors placed on us. You must reach out to our children to be the best they can be and help deny a new form of slavery, and that is ignorance. Remember, education is liberation, and each generation needs to be emancipated. We honor our ancestors when we reach out. I'm asking that you keep your bodies clean, and that probably sounds like your grandmother's message before you went off to school. <laughs> keep your bodies clean and keep your spiritual connections intact. Bodies clean, spiritual connections intact. Remember your heritage of social justice and rewarding, acknowledging, fighting for the rights of all people. There are some things that you cannot be in control of, but there are some things that you can. And I'm suggesting that you are in control of your history, you're in control of your education, you're in control of your acts of humanity, you're in control of your ethics, and you're in control of your sense of peoplehood. I, as one of your elders, needs to pass on the torch. I need to pass the torch of struggle and seeking justice and trying to carry education to its fullest opportunity. And I need to pass that on to you, and I need to have you accept this torch, not just a moment of acceptance, but in applying that acceptance to everything that you do in the name of your ancestors. I wish for you all the best that is good, just, and fair. I wish that above all the things I could wish. And I wish that particularly now because you need to be aware of all of the efforts that are out there to destroy us as a people, as the human quality that we bring to this environment. And there is a desire on the part of some to not embrace who we are. When you look at how our president of the United States is being treated by many, you know that there are those who find us as an educated, well-loving, human, social justice people, that that's very hard in some societies. Hold on, my friends. Remember that you, this day, and throughout your four years and many other years of learning to be a well-educated person, 
a caring person, a respectful person. You have made your ancestors proud. I am extremely proud to stand here before you and to wish you all the blessing that you can have and that you remember who you are and whose you are. Take care of yourself and your environment and your people. Congratulations to you and may all of the blessings that you want be received. Hang in there, my children, and let me pass this torch, and you please accept it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for your words of inspiration. Tonight, you are to receive a stole that you see on the table over there. To tell you about this stole is Patrick Troop, the director of the Multicultural Center for Academic Excellence, my replacement, who will speak about its significance. Welcome, Patrick. The awarding of the stole is a tradition first introduced here at the University of Minnesota by the African American Learning Resource Center some years ago. They honor their graduates with stoles fashioned after the traditional kente cloth. In keeping with that tradition, the stoles you will receive today is patterned after kente cloth and has been hand woven in Ghana, Africa. The beginnings of the weaving in Africa date back to about 3000 BC. According to ancient stories, people learned the art of weaving by observing a spider weaving a web. Traditionally, the cloths are woven primarily by men. However, women play an important role in sewing and marketing the cloths. Kinte is more than just a cloth. It is a visual representation of the history, oral tradition, social, and spiritual values. The kinte cloth is reserved for important and special social functions. We consider graduation one of the highest honors a person can achieve and have chosen a design reflecting the values we consider important. There are four symbols on the stole. One, the endless knot represents the interconnectedness of life. The second is the African symbol of two lizards sharing the same stomach, portrays unity. The third is an American Indian symbol of four arrows symbolizing people coming from all directions, united in wisdom. And finally, there are the words, University of Minnesota, symbolic of excellence, hard work, research, public service, and we hope a good time. We give you this stole and hope that you'll, it will help you to always remember and embrace connection, unity, and wisdom in your life. We also want this stole to honor your academic achievement, and we encourage you to wear it at your upcoming graduation ceremony and to other occasions that you deem special. Congratulations and best wishes to all of you. Now we come to the part of the program that will involve all of you. It is my pleasure to introduce Kathy Kipper, who is the Assistant Director for Academic Support Programs at the Multicultural Center for Academic Excellence, and Juva Lee, who is Assistant Director for Civic Engagement and Outreach at the Multicultural Center of Ac Academic Excellence, and they will handle the this part of the program.
that moment will represent some success to me, especially, you know, completing graduation, um, especially because before college, I never, never thought about coming to college. I just thought about working, supporting my family. That moment will represent, I think, everything, you know, everything that you've done in college, uh, academically, socially. That would represent accomplishments. That would represent a journey full of happiness. Walking up at the stage at the MK graduation, it's going to be a really big moment in in my life and in my parents' lives um, because I actually came to the U.S. when I was six. So being a first generation and an immigrant student, I've been able to have this opportunity to continue into college and being the first one in my family to graduate, I think that's a big achievement. It will be really, I'll be really, really excited, but I'll also be kind of sad because it's kind of like closing another cha a chapter of your life to begin a new one. You only go to college once in your lifetime and afterwards you just pretty much work you get into the professional world. I've grown here so much to figure out who I am and what I represent. And I think that day will mean success for me. It will be a success to be able to say, you know, I'm a college graduate. To me, it would symbolize a moment of success in that I have completed a mission in life, but there's more out there for me to do. So I will continue to seek other opportunities. They've uh, stepped it a notch here. It's not like high school anymore, it's college. And what they do is they expose us to new ideas and new, a new world that we've never even noticed that it exists. I'm going to be coming to the university alone, so the main reason for me to actually get involved in it was I wanted to meet friends, meet people. Because I've already been on the campus, but I never really had any friends coming here, so I figured that would be a good time for me to interact with other students, incoming students that would be in the same situation as I am. Sometimes I'm a shy person, but through MK I was able to open up and be myself more and not really kind of make the stuff that I was doing. Sometimes you would think that you shouldn't show it to others, but through MK I was able to be who I am. I have never been in a place where I've seen so many different races, so many different cultures, so many different people that come together, that are tutors, that are part of different programs around MK, that really have an investment in higher, edu higher education. Over the years, a couple years, I've been really involved with the uh, Minnesota Center for Neighborhood Organizing, and that's a program where they bring in Hmong, Hmong Thai students who has just been in America for the past six years, um, two campus on Sunday nights for three hours, and we help them through the homeworks on that, in that program as well. I currently work at MK at the computer lab downstairs in Appleby Hall, and it's helped me a lot mentally, so I, I really can't thank MK enough for what they've done to me. I'm also in the Multicultural Civic Engagement Program where they um, have, they give scholarships to students who do service, community service hours. I became an MK ambassador. I tutor in Ojibwe language, culture, and history. One of the, the things that I enjoyed about being an MK ambassador was the fact that I was able to mentor a future student here at the U of M and give them the advice and help them know about the resources that the, not only that, that MK has to offer, but the U of M as well. From the beginning of this year, I, especially the first year students, I've seen so much growth and it just really excites me to see how far they're coming and how dedicated they are to learning the Ojibwe language. I was able to, to help those students feel more welcomed and more comfortable into an environment that, that is new and at the same time strange. I may never know everything that I want to know and to me that's okay now because I see the growth in myself and how easy these things that I struggled with first year, first semester of Ojibwe and how easy they come to me now to be able to share that with these students to say hey it's not that hard take us take a breath. They show us that we, even though are all different from the outside, we are all the same from the inside. We are all human. 
At this time, Chris Lockhart will be draping each graduate with this beautiful multicultural stole. A representative from our college communities will also assist her. Chris? And now, please join us in acknowledging our graduates. We will be reading the name, major, and degree of each graduate. We ask that you hold your applause until all of the graduates from each college have been announced. This afternoon, we are recognizing the success and perseverance of our undergraduate students. We are also honoring students that have obtained graduate degrees and are embarking on a new and sometimes continuing cycle of leadership. We value their past accomplishments and come this afternoon to recognize that they have persevered this arduous journey. They are candidates for graduate and professional degrees. Would the graduates of the Academic Health Center please come forward? Assistant, Nat Assistant Dean Natty Lopez from the School of Dentistry and John Finnegan, Dean of the School of Public Health, will be assisting Chris. Ariel Mercado, Clinical Laboratory Science, Bachelor of Science, Academic Health Center. Mesa Gamita, Clinical Lab Science. Samara Ahmed, Clinical Laboratory Science, BS, Academic Health Center. Now you may express your congratulations to this group of students. <laughs> Would a gra graduate of Carlson School of Management please come forward? Uh, Associate Dean Siri Zahir will be assisting Chris Lockhart. Jennifer Cruz Irizarry, Supply Chain and Operations Management, Bachelor of Science of Business. Bin Liang, Accounting, BS, Finance and Risk Management Assurance. Nancy Vaughn, Marketing, Bachelor of Science. Dana Tao, Accounting, BS. Sopek Pin, Marketing, Bachelor of Science. Nida Ch Charaberry, Supply Chain and Operation Management, Bachelor of Science, and B Economics. Bachelor of Science as well. Bria Turner, International Business and Public Nonprofit Management, Bachelor of Science. Jenge Tamba, <laughs> Finance, Bachelor of Science. Andrea Rodriguez, Bachelor of Science of Business in Supply Chain and Operations Management and Finance. Huey Zhang, Master of Business Administration. Congratulations, graduates. Would the graduates of the College of Biological Sciences please come forward? Dean Bob Eldy and Associate Provost and Dean of Graduate Education Henning Schroeder will be assisting Chris Lockhart.
Abdi Samad Ibrahim, Genetics and Cell Biology and Development, Bachelor of Science. Nula Yang, Biology, Bachelor of Science. Amy Yang, Biology, Bachelor of Science. Amanda Yang, Biology, Bachelor of Science. Kanika Ben, Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry. Amy Chuang, Biology, Bachelor of Science. Mary D, Biochemistry, Bachelor of Science. Yi Wen Chai, Biochemistry, Bachelor of Science. Yi Zhang, Neuroscience, Bachelor of Science, and BA in Physiology. Dime Idusa, Biology, Bachelor of Science. Almarie Coleman, Bachelor of Science in Biology. Olufei Olufe May, Fog Bay Me, Biology, Biological. Uh, Bachelor of Science. Now you may express your congratulations to this group of students. Would a graduate of a continuing education please come forward? Dean Bob Elder and uh, Associate Provost and Dean of Graduate Education, Henning Schroeder will assist Chris Lockhart. Ku Yang, Inter College Bachelor of Art in Public Health and Chinese. Trixie Tran, English Youth Studies in U.S. Race and Ethnicity, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Sama Hussain, Hussein, I'm sorry. Public Health, Youth Studies, Leadership Studies, Bachelor of Science. Hiba Sharif, Bachelor of Science in Public Health, Business Management. You may now express your congratulations to this group of students. Would the graduates of the College of Design please come forward? Associate Dean Lee Anderson and Associate Provost and Dean of Graduate Education Henning Schroeder will be assisting Chris. Hien Huen, Retail Merchandising, Bachelor of Science. Angel Yang, Retail Merchandising, Bachelor of Science. You may, you may express your congratulations to this group of students. Would the graduate of the College of Education and Human Development please come forward? Associate Dean Heidi Barajas and Associate Provost and Dean of Graduate Education Henning Schroeder will assist Chris Lockhart. Angela Zimmer, Kinesiology, Bachelor of Science. Crystal Koyobayan, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Brittany Stevenaller, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science.
Jasma Bennett, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Tanisha Robinson, Bachelor of Science, Business and Marketing Education. Matisha Adams, Early Childhood Education, Bachelor of Science. Kenya Ali, Bachelor of Science in Family Social Science. Monique Mingo, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. John Shang, Kinesiology, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Jotika Whitehandy. White Recreation and Leisure Studies, Bachelor of Science. Maria Rios, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Timbet Itafa, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Fatuma Waco, Family Social Science. <laughs> Elisa Ilia Mbanto, Ontari. Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Faith Dolominga, Family Social Science. Eta Passaway, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Sharice Alcorn, Family Social Science. Donovan Bengay, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Jay Palmua, Human Resource Development, Bachelor of Science. Nia Xiong, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Sheng Yang, Family Social Science. Bai Xiong, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Mary Yang, Family Social Science. <laughs> Zhao Hao, Elementary Education, Bachelor of Arts. Kerr Tao, Family Social Science. Nali Wang, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Nelly Tao, Family Social Science. Ba Li. Business and Marketing Education, Bachelor of Science, Human Resources Development, Bachelor of Science. Gur Lee, Family Social Science. <laughs> Fatima Pam. Pam Marie Vala, 
<laughs> Human Resource Development, Bachelor of Science. Rakeb Mohammed, Elementary Education, Bachelor of Science. Iskander Hassan, Business and Marketing Bachelor of Art, Human Resource Development Bachelor of Art. Abdisalan Mohamud, Business and Marketing Education, Bachelor of Science. Bai Vu. Human Resource Development, Bachelor of Science. Hassan Mahmoud, Business and Marketing Education, Bachelor of Science. Bajo Mohamud, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Fatih Gelly, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science. Tabitha Sengsir, Elementary Education, Bachelor of Arts. Saida Hassan, Elementary Education, Bachelor of Science. Ka Long, Master of Social Work. <laughs> Nasra Mohammed, Master of Social Work. Kaya Mala Howard, Master of Social Work. Evelyn Kapaya, Master of Social Work. Hapsa Keika, Master of Social Work. Amina Mohammed, Master of Social Work. Antania Didike, Master of Social Work. Win T. Tran Myri, Educational, Psycholo Educational Psychology, Master of Arts. Robin Kelly, Educational Psychology, Master of Arts. Please help me in congratulating this group of graduates. Would the graduates from the College of Food, Agriculture, and Natural Resource Sciences please come forward? Senior Associate Dean Greg Como and Associate Provost and Dean of Graduate Education Henning Schroeder will be assisting Chris Lockhart. Bao Li, Applied Economics, Bachelor of Science. Connie Yi, Applied Economics, Bachelor of Science.
Maggie Ting Wong, Food Science, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Selena Jones, Applied Economics, Bachelor of Science. Tiffany Washington, Applied Economics, Bachelor of Science. Peng Yang, Environmental Science Policy and Management, Bachelor of Science. Woo! Now you may congratulate this group of students. <laughs> Would the graduate of the College of Liberal Arts please come forward? Associate Dean Jennifer Winter and Associate Provost Dean of a graduate education, handing shorter will assist Chris Lockhart. <laughs> Crystal Ivo Obana, Theater Arts, Bachelor of Arts, Communication Studies, and Bachelor of Arts. Li Fong Yang, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Abdullahi Wasami, Applied Economics, Bachelor of Science. Ka Yang, Child Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Kia Xiong, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Dishana Gray Laze, Communications, Bachelor of Arts. Julio Hermera. Sociology, Law, and Criminal Deviants, Bachelor of Arts, Chicano Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Sheena Lossing, Broadcast Journalism, Bachelor of Arts. Iman Mohammed, Journalism, Bachelor of Arts. Kafia Ahmed, Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts, and Political Science, Bachelor of Arts. Mustafa Jamal, African American Studies, oh, African American and African Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Honors, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Sarika Joshi, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Muna Mohammed, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Science. Michael Dehip, Biology, Society, and the Environment, College of Liberal Arts, Bachelor of Arts. Javida Bahari, Individualized Degree in Sociology, Youth Studies, and Greek Civilization and Language, Bachelor of Arts. Kimberly Buford, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Joy Williams, Sociology of Law, Criminology and Deviance, Bachelor of Arts. Karina Chavez, Spanish Studies and a minor in Chicano Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Woo! 
Sharif Tai Taiwo, Physiology Bachelor of Art. Teresa Amaloja, Biology Society and the Environment, Bachelor of Arts. Teresia Naibano, Physiology, Bachelor of Arts. Zara Hassan, Biology, Society, and Environment, Bachelor of Arts. Mizki Ahmed, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Idil Hassan, Biology and Society. Dega Mohammed, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Mutar Ibrahim, Journalism, Bachelor of Arts. Zara Omar, Biology, Society and Environment, Bachelor of Arts. Mohammed Ali, Biology, Society and Environment, Bachelor of Arts. Muna Khalib, Sociology, Minor in Biology, Bachelor of Science. Cortez Riley, African American and African Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Mohammed Karimi, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Eurydia Ramirez, History, Bachelor of Arts, and Journalism, Bachelor of Arts. Myra Rosalie, Chicano Studies, Spanish Study, Bachelor of Arts. Ta Gwen No, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Rukia Mohammed, Global Studies, Public Health and Leadership, Bachelor of Arts. Shukri Abdinur, Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Hotan Bile, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Malko Samatar, Child Psychology, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Saida Mohammed, Child Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Salma Ali, Bachelors of Individualized Studies in Sociology, Psychology, and Public Health. Latanya Gordon, Individualized Studies, Dance, Music, Art, Bachelor of Art. Samari Pell, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts and Communications, Bachelor of Arts. Okay. Okay. 
It was Sunday. Talam. Talam. Okay. Tata Mantan, sociology, minor in African American studies, Bachelor of Arts. Fastina Boa and Pansa, Chemistry, Bachelor of Arts. Marianne Amu, Tri Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Mai Nong Yang, Anthropology, Bachelor of Arts. Xiong Lo, Sociology of Law, Criminology, and Deviance, Bachelor of Arts. Celeste Larson, English, Bachelor of Arts. Cassandra Gandhi, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Cassandra Kamich, Anthropology, Bachelor of Arts, and Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Ellis Sue, Biology, Society, and the Environment, Bachelor of Arts. Chua Amanda Lowe, Communication Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Diana Sotamba, Spanish Study, Bachelor of Arts. Leela Schuler, Child Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Christian King, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Zakia Edwards, Broadcast Journalism, Bachelor of Arts and Theater Arts. Shayla Walker, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Adora Land, Sociology, Law, and Criminal Deviance in African and African American Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Courtney Bell, Sociology of Law, Criminology, and Deviance, Bachelor of Arts. Shavita Prasad, Child Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Jua Lee, Studies in Cinema and Media Culture, Bachelor of Arts. Sang Shang, Sociology of Law, Criminology, and Deviance, Bachelor of Arts. Mai Chia Yang. Sociology of Law, Criminology, and Deviance. Global Studies and Southeast Asian Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Bua Ku Lo, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Wang Tao, Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Ker 
Matez Ellis, Communication Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Sao Yang, Asian Language and Literature, Chinese Bachelor of Arts. Kong Pa, Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Kevin Tao. Art, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Kia Vu, Linguistics, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Hawa Fokpa, <laughs> Biology, Society, and the Environment, Bachelor of Arts. Atinuke Akindu Mila, Family Social Science, Bachelor of Science, and African American Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Hey, congratulations. MK. Fong Trung, Sociology and Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Addison Ragnas, Asian Languages and Literature, Bachelor of Arts. Pamela Vang, American Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Nicholas Wahutu, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts, and Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Janelle Shoemake, Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Margaret Wahutu, Biology, Society, and Environment, and Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Amran Guli, Sociology and Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Nancy Knara. Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Ashley Young, Strategic Communications, Advertising, Bachelor of Arts. Diana Vaughn, Individual Site, Individualized Studies, BIS. Larissa Littlewolf, American Indian Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Rayette Peltier, Mass Communications, Bachelor of Arts. Zuri Bender. American Indian Studies and Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Pink Tam, Geography, Bachelor of Science. Ladia Gurma. Political Science and Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Siobhan Hanuman, Sociology, Bachelor of Arts. Andrew Manalo, Communication Studies, Bachelor of Arts.
Amelia and Deli, Economics, Bachelor of Arts. Nimade Dunbar, Global Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Marie Verbaten, Child Psychology, Bachelor of Arts. Daisy Gels, Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts. Guli Ibrahim, Journalism, Bachelor of Arts. Chua Lee, Social Science, Bachelor of Arts. Yuki Yokoyama, Studies in Cinema and Media Cultures. Cultural Studies and Comparative Literatures, Bachelor of Arts. Ayan Ali, Psychology, Bachelor of Science. Fahiyo Ahmed, Physiology, Bachelor of Arts, Microbiology, Bachelor of Science. Khadijo Ismail, Physiology, Bachelor of Arts, and Leadership Minor. Aisho Abdurrahim, Physiology, Bachelor of Arts, and Biochemistry Minor. Anisha Cook, English Studies, Bachelor of Arts. Helen Crump, Feminist Studies, PhD. Congratulations, CLA graduates. With the graduates of the College of Science and Engineering, please come forward. Professor Edgar Ariaga and Associate Provost and Dean Henning Schroeder will be assisting Chris Lockhart. Munzir Alias, Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Wonder Chang, Chemical Engineering and Chemistry. Bachelor of Science. Catherine Nayambu, Computer Science, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Mohammed Noz Sagiman, <laughs> Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Win Tu Nguyen, Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. Jonathan Tan, Chemistry, Bachelor of Science. Yen Ming Tan, Aerospace Engineering and Mechanics, Bachelor of Science.
Sui Chai. Geology, Bachelor of Science. Jimmy Wong, Chemistry and Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. George Anduso, Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Jonas Valdez, Chemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Jay Park, Chemistry and Biology, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Vanessa Bui, Biomedical Engineering, Bachelor of Biomedical Engineering. Rachel Gunbutt, Bio Biomedical Engineering, Bachelor of Science, no, Bachelor of Biomedical Engineering. Olabakala Durasanya, Biomedical Engineering. <laughs> Joshua. Coles, Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Alexander Jordan, Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Sharif Alabadi, Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Alyssa Eunice Tan, Computer Engineering, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Yasu Rumichao, Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Baruch Asfa, Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Jessica Santiago, <laughs> Physics, Bachelor of Science. Simon Gibrihewe, <laughs> Physics, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Gustavo Lopez, Mechanical Engineering, Bachelor of Science. Now you can congratulate this group of students. Congratulations, graduates. Would the graduate from the Humphrey, no, the Hubert Humphrey Institute of Public Affairs come forward? Then Jim Lewis and the uh, Associate Provost Dean for Graduate Education, handing shorter what assist Chris Lockhart. Anab Goulet, Master of Public Affairs. Obanea Oji, Master of Public Affairs. Congratulations. Would the graduates from the School of Dentistry please come forward? Assistant Dean Natty Lopez will be assisting Chris Lockhart.
Lindsay Paul, Dentistry, DDS. Congratulations. Would a graduate from the School of Nursing please come forward? Professor and Vice Dean for Academic Mission, Sandra Edwardson will assist Chris Lockhart. Miada Hussein, Nursing, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Priska Atagbu, Bachelor of Science of Nursing. Alexius. Bakari, Nursing, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Laura Gallardo, Nursing, Bachelor of Science. Idel Mohammed, Nursing. Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Shadia Mohamud, Nursing, Bachelor of Science. Olu Vadayo. Olu Vadara, Dentistry. <laughs> Doctor of Dental Surgery. Congratulations, graduates. Henning Schroeder, please assist Chris Lockhart. Would the School of Pharmacy please come forward? Ruth Chi, Doctor of Pharmacy. Amila Shanai, Doctor of Pharmacy. Ade Kule Holkokar, Doctor of Pharmacy. Scott Skohan, Doctor of Pharmacy. Let's give a round of applause for all of our graduating students. One of my favorite moments um, was the multicultural kickoff last year, last summer, and I was one of the ambassadors, and I think that that program was really well developed and I think that they helped us tra help train the ambassadors a, a lot with their um, leadership and getting them engaged and getting them excited to be excited with the incoming freshmen. I've just learned that everyone has a unique side to them and you never know what the next student beholds. Whether it's a study group, whether it's a social event, whether it's a tour guide or whether whether it's just for volunteering or for any kind of work, intern or any kind of 
workshop that they run. They invite anyone. When we think of the U of M, we do think that it's a, it's a diverse population, but at the same time, majority are white students, and so we're, there's not a lot of people of color, and I think through MK we're able to have that support system that we don't often get to see at other locations. MK prepared me as to be a leader in the fact that they represented what leadership was. The staff here um, not only talked about leadership, but they were leaders in their own certain subjects, own ways, and they really I believe that their goal is to create leaders in this world. Another one is the Family Literacy Program. Being involved in that program for four years now, my first two years I was just a tutor and then after my sophomore year, coming in my junior year, I was promoted to be the assistant coordinator and through that, um, through that position, I think that I have expanded my experience, expanded my, developed my skills so much and, and I'm, be able, I'm able to lead other student, students here on campus. The more people that you know, the more that you're able to reach out and to learn and understand about others, it makes you a more well-rounded well -rounded person yourself. We all have something in common and we just want to find happiness in life and that's why we're here in college. We're trying to find ourselves every one of us. A lot of the information that we have, we don't really get it from our parents, but we get it from the staff here. I know that myself being first generation, my parents didn't really know a lot about the process in applying for college or the things that happened during college. So by going through MK staff, I was able to figure out on how to get to those certain steps. Just having them there for support allowed me to become president allowed me to take on these higher responsibilities. Being responsible enough to plan board meetings, to plan events. They prepared me and supported me in ways that just really showcased my strengths and helped me with my weaknesses. Coming to college, my whole life has changed. I've done so much at the University of Minnesota, not just with MK, but studying abroad, student organizations. Whether we're African American, White American, European American, Asian American, Hispanic American, we're all here to find happiness in our life. When students are looking into colleges, some of them are looking into the diversity of the campus and by having MK, students will be able to know that there is a diverse campus here at the U of M. I know a lot of students, including myself, have tried to conform to this university type student that the U wants to see. And if you want to do that, that's great, but you know, MK really shows acceptance for all students, all backgrounds, any struggles, any difficulties, they're there for support. You guys have really helped me develop my leadership and really seek all the opportunities that will help me grow as a person. My fellow classmates, uh, I just like to say, we made it. <laughs> Without MK to employ these tutors to help us out, I don't think most of us would be able to cope with the anxiety and the stress of all those hard classes. I would like to thank MK and my fellow classmates for being there for me throughout my four years in college and giving me the knowledge and the support system to continue on through the rest of my years. To the staff and the faculty, just an immense thank you because without a lot of the staff here, I don't know if I would be a college graduate. Our closing remarks tonight will be given by Dr. Robert Jones, Senior Vice President for System and Academic Administration. Dr. Jones is Senior Vice President at the University of Minnesota, uh, Soda, a position he has held since 2004. He serves as Chief Senior Academic, I'm sorry, he serves as a Senior Academic and Chief Operating Officer for the total University of Minnesota system, which includes a coordinate campus. He oversees a broad portfolio of programs and initiatives that include diversity. In addition to his administrative work, Dr. Jones is also a recognized professor in the field of agricultural science. Please welcome Dr. Jones. Thank you very much. 
Carolyn, and uh, good evening. It's indeed an honor and a pleasure uh, to have the opportunity to participate and provide some closing remarks for this very, very special occasion. Uh, since I know that I'm the final speaker and I'm the only thing that stands between you and refreshments, <laughs> I will try to keep my remarks very short. As my uh, boss, uh, Dr. Johnson said, I call her my boss because she was the first person that hired me into a real administrative position here at this university. And I can tell you, this woman is very much deserving, deserving of another round of applause because I can think of no one who has given more of themselves unselfishly uh, to the broader society and to this university than Dr. Johnson. And as she alluded to, and as W.E. Du Bois once stated, of all the civil rights that people have fought and died for for hundreds of years, there's nothing more fundamental than the right to obtain an education. And I want to thank and congratulate each and every one of you for exercising this right. Because I think you would agree that far too many of your peers, the people that you started elementary school with, the ones that you finished high school with, have failed to exercise this fundamental civil rights. Because they fell victim to what some call the soft bigotry of low expectation that perpetuates through some of our families and far too many of our school systems. You are about to graduate from one of the premier universities in this country. Your degree will serve your life well for your entire life. You will be joining a distinguished group of alumni who have gone on to great heights to become elected officials both locally in the state and in the nation. Alumni who've gone on to be famous surgeons, inventors, authors, founders of companies that drive economic development throughout the nation and around the world. And you, some of you will be joining the rank, rank of educators and joining one of, what I call one of the most noble careers in the world, and that is teaching, educating our children. And again, I want to applaud you for that. Your degree is a badge of honor, something of which you can be, ex be extremely proud. It's a sign to others that you have worked hard, you've persevered, you've learned facts, but more importantly, you've learned to learn effectively. And again, perhaps the most important thing that you've learned during your tenure here at this university, not just that you've learned facts, but you've learned to solve problems, you've learned to work in teams, to think critically and to communicate effectively. This is your ticket, perhaps to jobs, to graduate school, professional school, and to join the community of university alumni. But most of all, you will soon walk through the door to a new life, a life that has promise and opportunity and many unexpected things. I implore you to explore each path, explore each door that opens unto you. Each can hold something wonderful, and you don't have to travel down just one road. So as Senior Vice President of the University of Minnesota System, on behalf of our President Robert H. Brunix and the entire University of Minnesota System, I extend a congratulations to you. And now in closing, and in honor of your upcoming graduation from undergraduate, graduate, and professional degree programs, I'd like to ask the families, friends, and supporters who have joined you here today to join me in giving these graduates an expression of our pride and support for the achievements and the milestones in their journey 
by giving you a round of applause. And lastly, graduates, I know that you didn't make this journey alone, so I'd like to ask you to join me in the opportunity to thank your parents, your families, friends, instructors, mentors, peers, and friends for the support and for continuing to stand by you uh, from your beginning of your education until your achievement at this point. So graduates, let's give our families and friends a round of applause. So again, congratulations. So now, go change the world. Wait a minute. Hold it. <laughs> I just wanted to give you your final instructions as you leave this evening. Um, again, we want to thank those who helped to bring this program about. I especially want to thank our college deans and representatives here, our student marshals, the Office for Equity and Diversity, um, as well as the planning committee and everybody else who helped bring this program about. As you leave tonight, we're going to ask that the graduates will leave to the music provided by the Mariachi de los Mensajeros. Now listen, the graduates, the graduates will leave through the back door, and we ask that the rest of you stand while they are leaving and allow them to leave the hall. So please join us in listening to the Mensajeros uh, the, the Mariachi de los Mensajeros as they uh, serenade the graduates as they leave. And then we ask that you go to the reception where the food will be catered by the UDS catering. So, will the graduates please stand? Okay, Mariachi. Okay. And students may leave, the graduates may leave. <laughs> <laughs>